faccio il ciclo fattorino ormai da più di due anni. Eh, ho iniziato perché avevo bisogno insomma, di affiancare un lavoro che facevo eh, part time, un altro lavoro eh, per riuscire ad arrivare alla fine del mese e campare. Eh, I requisiti per questo lavoro sono eh, che tu eh, abbia eh, in possesso uno smartphone e eh, il mezzo, cioè o una bicicletta o uno scooter. Dopodiché io ho fatto diciamo, un incontro con eh, i miei datori di lavoro in cui mi è stato un attimo spiegato come eh, funzionava il tutto, mi hanno fatto scaricare un'applicazione e da lì ufficialmente sono entrato eh, nella flotta, come si dice in gergo. E cosa è successo? Che eh, lavorando mi sono accorto che i problemi erano molti e, e cioè innanzitutto io eh, non ho firmato neanche un contratto. E ho iniziato a lavorare eh, praticamente senza nessun tipo di tutela, di garanzia, di sicurezza eh, perché appunto noi non abbiamo eh, assicurazioni sugli infortuni, eh, non abbiamo eh, ferie, malattie, contributi e però abbiamo iniziato ormai appunto due anni fa a incontrarci con eh, i, i vari riders, no? con i colleghi sia della stessa piattaforma ma anche delle altre piattaforme e abbiamo iniziato a incontrarci per le strade perché ricordiamo che la città e la strada è il nostro luogo di lavoro quindi abbiamo iniziato eh, a parlarci e abbiamo visto e capito che anche nonostante la differenza di colori di borsoni eh, eravamo bene o male accomunati dalla stessa situazione e cioè una situazione appunto di precarietà, eh, di ricattabilità, di assenza di tutele, di diritti Sono nate delle, delle cooperative eh, con delle condizioni eh, di lavoro completamente differenti. Invertire il, il modello, non una piattaforma che concentra tutto il potere in, una, eh, in, un, solo, in un solo strumento, in un solo luogo, se, eh, ma distribuire lo strumento di form, in, forma, in forma che solo le cooperative lo possano utilizzare. Esistono parecchie cooperative in Europa eh, che, che funzionano e funzionano eh, bene attraverso la, la piattaforma come a Lione, Trebulot a Lione, Molenbike a Bruxelles, ehm, a, a Berlino, cioè a, a Bordeaux, lo stesso Parigi eh, e, qui, e qui a Madrid. Abbiamo deciso poi di organizzare un vero e proprio sciopero, una grande nevicata qua a Bologna, le piattaforme tutte quante eh, ci volevano costringere comunque a scendere in strada a lavorare e invece c'è stata diciamo, una risposta, un'insubordinazione eh, da parte della maggioranza dei riders dicendo eh, la mia vita eh, non vale una pizza. The situation here and the operations are changing every year, I would say, or every month. Uh, of course, in the beginning of 2015, it was completely different, a lot of people arriving. There was help needed even at sea or even on land. Um, there were a lot of rescue boats from NGOs. Bravo, 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 le! This uh, got changed a lot after the EU-Turkey agreement in March 2016 when the arrivals 
um, drop down a lot. Um, the difference is that the people are stuck more in Turkey and they just uh, try to come uh, more and more times according to how many times they're getting pushed back. Sometimes we feel alone, but we're not. There is a big movement. There are a lot of people who are doing what we are doing. There are a lot of people who are doing even more. Uh, especially in Europe, in countries, in a lot of countries, especially I would say Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, um, there are big movements and there are people who are uh, really, pu really pushing for, for a difference. It is uh, humanitarian actions, uh, but definitely it has to do also with political ideas. Um, uh, as I said before, this is not a refugee crisis, this is a political crisis. I chose to come to Greece um, to volunteer because I think safe passage needs to be provided to people trying to come fleeing war, conflict and bad conditions of life. I think the freedom of movement should be real for everyone and everyone could choose, should be able to choose where they want to spend their lives, even more if they're fleeing danger or conflict or war. <laughs> It's true that here I think uh, it's a base uh, for people that kind of have a common ground, uh, are trying to address the same problem. So it's true that here uh, I do believe that there's a lot of people that, especially young people, as you say, like the next generation of humanitarian aid workers, but I do believe that Lesbos is only one piece of this humanitarian puzzle, let's say. We are here today because we have decided which path we want to take. We are the ones making a difference. If no one else will take action, then so will we. It, it should not be that way. We should not be the ones fighting for the future. And yet here we are, since basically no one is doing anything. Some would say we are wasting lesson time. We say we are changing the world. So that when we are older, we will be able to look back and say that we did everything we could. And we will continue to do so. We will continue to fight for our future and for the living planet. So, um, my name is Indigo and I come from an occupied forest in Western Germany. This forest is supposed to be cut down because there's coal under it. And um, we went into the forest with tree houses to try to prevent it from being cut down. This forest has been occupied for nearly seven years now. Um, but the resistance in this area is much older. This uh, coal mine started 40 years ago and local people have resisted ever since. But since seven years the whole struggle got more international because it got the thing of like fighting climate change instead of just um, being against the mine because it's destroying the landscape there. So um, it's a very international struggle now and it's not just for protecting the climate or the area, but it's about climate justice. So we say that we cannot fight climate change in a system that's based on exploitation. So we need to have another economic system in order to live su sustainable on this planet.
Climate change is nothing that is limited on national boundaries and um, it's actually a problem of huge global injustice because in Northern Europe we produce the CO2, we make the emission there, but we are not the countries who are most affected. So it's kind of our global responsibility to stop CO2 emission right there, right where it comes from. The Hambach lignite mine, together with the other mines there, are the biggest source of CO2 in whole Europe. The Trans Europa Caravan project is a project that is happening in 15 European countries. Uh, there are five caravans traveling, each of them in three countries, um, to meet organizations, people, cities, institutions, anything that works for a better Europe, a more solidary one, more, more open-minded, more uh, ecological, <coughs> more progressist. So each route of um, the caravans that uh, we planned and organized um, is about 12 days long. But it took so much more time beforehand to, to gather people who would be interested to join the teams, uh, to train them, to prepare them to become trainers and multipliers and facilitators and go in the street in different countries and work with people they will meet. For them to finally set off with their caravans that is starting now, like this day, so we are very excited because three caravans are actually already on their way. Um, and then we will be evaluating their stories and collect what they um, will see and, and stories that they will, they will meet and experience in a form of um, best practices. So we'll collect best practices and, evalu and evaluate what they have seen during their routes. During the Trans Europa caravans, we're going to connect like a um, lot of uh, people, like citizens, collect their stories, but also connect their struggles and visit initiatives that are already working on all these struggles and um, also different ideas like for the future of Europe. And we hope to also be able to share like some of our knowledge, our skills with them, and to join forces to. Um, inform people and engage them to build a greater Europe together and to actually vote this time to make that happen. So uh, we are meeting different places, different people, and we are deciding if this specific um, a place or action is, can be considered a good practice. So something that other people in other countries can either join or uh, implement in their countries on the local, um, like in the local reality. We want to show that Europe is something different than um, our nationalistic leaders may be talking about, or a bit different from the idea that maybe the European Commission is trying to present. I mean, it really is a collection of identities, stories, struggles, people's lives, lifestyles. Uh, as we could see in the Vis Visegrad caravan that is already on their way, um, there are stories of Ukrainians, Serbians, people who are not EU citizens, but they are living in the EU and they have their own story to tell. And that's still Europe. Uh, beyond the nation state, together from Lisbon to Warsaw, from London to Rome, from Athens to Berlin, then we know that we can solve those problems together and be stronger than only fighting in our local community or in the nation state, which definitely, in my opinion, will not be able to solve problems like mi the migration or uh, climate change or financial capitalism. And we want to connect. So sometimes there are small places of resistance or some uh, struggles that people are sharing on the global perspective. We will be uh, traveling through uh, Germany, Austria and Hungary, but we uh, have 15 activists who will be visiting also Portugal and Spain and France and um, Italy. And um, yeah, so, so sometimes the struggles are similar, but people don't know about their existence even. So we want to connect them both internationally and maybe even locally. Una palestra popolare deve essere un luogo che ridà 
al popolo quello che al popolo è stato tolto. Lo sport per come noi lo abbiamo conosciuto, il divertimento, il giocare a pallone, l'andare nella palestra, nella palestrina o nella scuola, questa cosa non esiste più. Oggi esistono quelli che io chiamo in modo così ironico, a presa in giro, i centri commerciali dello sport, questi luoghi mastodontici dove c'è tutto e non c'è niente, dove per iscrivete bene che te va, paghi 100 euro, tra quello che ti chiedono il conto in banca e chi è, qual è la famiglia oggi a maggior ragione in un quartiere come il nostro che si può permettere di mandare il figlio in una palestra a fare sport a 150-200 euro al mese? Nessuno. Il risultato qual è stato? Che quando questa cosa ha intaccato pesantemente la società, i ragazzi si sono ributtati sui muretti, a segan, a drogasse, a buttasse nel degrado più totale e questa cosa noi non la potevamo accettare. È fondamentale aver fatto questa palestra nel quartiere perché era un quartiere abbandonato, non c'ha e non c'aveva nulla, tantomeno un luogo dove fare sport a prezzi popolari a, a, aperto a tutti, tanto è vero che non ci si allena soltanto perché paghi. Se ci sono persone in difficoltà vengono e si allenano, bambini in difficoltà soprattutto vengono e si allenano perché noi è sempre stata la politica nostra, è sempre stata quella che un bambino vale 10 a tutti. De, de construir un espacio, en este caso, eh, en el que todos y todas no, nos sintamos a gusto, nos sintamos a gusto, eh, compartamos ideales, compartamos también el día a día, porque al final también se convierte ya no solo en un gimnasio y en un sitio donde pasar dos horas, se convierte en algo muchísimo más grande. Entonces al final yo creo que compartiendo un poco esas ideas eh, de querer formar algo así, como lo que hemos hecho, eh, nace, nace un poco la escuela deportiva, van saliendo bien las cosas, y de alguna manera es lo que tenemos a día de hoy, convertido en un gimnasio prácticamente que no tiene que envidiar las instalaciones, ya lo habéis visto, a ningún otro gimnasio de cualquier otro barrio. È bella proprio l'idea di questa palestra, cioè il fatto che in questo quartiere comunque sia un posto dove, a parte il corso quello che seguo io di full contact, ad esempio c'è il corso di ginnastica artistica che permette a quasi cioè a tante famiglie del quartiere di avere un posto dove lasciare i propri figli e essere sicuri che stanno lì, si divertono, vengono seguiti e quindi no, questo mi piace molto di questa palestra, il fatto che cioè, è un punto di ritrovo proprio del, del quartiere.